Some people say that tech and aerospace engineering are two worlds that never collide. Well, I'm here to say no, that is not true at all. Okay, so let's start off with satellites and machine learning. How do these two smash together to solve some of the world's most challenging problems? So a specific type of satellite, namely a Earth observation satellite, produces a lot of data about what the Earth looks like from space. And as you probably already are familiar, machine learning basically tries and makes sense of lots of data. So now as a planet, since we have so many Earth observation satellites in space, we have such an incredible amount of data. But how can we make sense of all of this? Well, there are many industries where this type of sort of technology can really benefit. Agriculture and farming, that is one industry that using basically pictures from satellites really helps understand how much product is going to be produced from the various fields. So this will sort of give that ability to predict crop yield and therefore you're able to then predict whether you will have enough food for a certain region or a certain country or even on a global scale itself. So then you can try and make provisions to try and ensure people don't starve to death pretty much. If you're one of those finance bro type of guys, then you're definitely gonna like this next one. So using satellite imagery, you're able to predict the price of commodities. So for example, in say a, another country, they have a lot of oil reserves and so on. You could be able to predict the price of oil based on how much oil is being produced. And this is very smart, okay? I was surprised when I heard this. They look at the satellite imagery and based on the shadows that the tanks of oil cast, because the tanks of oil, I believe, they increase and decrease in height, maybe oil, maybe gas, but depending on how much of that exists, you'll be able to see a different shadow. So people have been able to create machine learning algorithms to look at these images and predict the prices of gas or oil just from the shadows of these storage units in say a completely different country. And to me, that sounds like a ridiculous infinite money glitch if you think about it. But you know what? If people can manage to actually do that, then you kind of deserve that money in my opinion. Another financially incentivized solution is that in the real estate industry, you can predict the prices of houses or basically predict the price of a potential house in a certain location by analyzing different satellite imageries and also bringing the data of what the area looks like and also the typical house prices in the area you're able to create like a really effective model to then predict the price of a specific property depending on you know for example what's nearby maybe there's like x amount of square kilometers of green space or maybe it's close to a train station and so on and so on so just by looking at the satellite imagery you're able to then predict the prices of houses in specific areas which is greatly beneficial because you want to accurately price something or if you want to develop a new property and you want to sort of get a ballpark figure of what the prices would be in that area then this is a great way for you to do that. And there are actually companies already working on this type of technology. One of the biggest companies in the game is a company called Planet, formerly known as Planet Labs and they're based in America and they basically have so many different solutions for a variety of industries. So I recommend just checking out their website and having a look if you're interested because they have things ranging from commercial goods to agriculture to whatever you think of, it's probably there. So it's really an interesting company and if you're interested in that sort of thing, that could be somewhere that you might want to work in the future. So next up we have spacecraft and automation. I'm gonna split this up into two categories. So I'm gonna talk about space exploration and then another category will be to do with launch vehicles. So let's start off with space exploration. One of the biggest and most lucrative space exploration sub-industries is definitely going to be asteroid mining. Asteroid mining is set to solve some of the world's most difficult problems because if the Earth is running out of some precious materials that we use every day, for example, in our smartphones and various other gadgets. And well, if you add spacecraft and asteroid mining and automation together, well, you have a recipe for success. The reason why automation is really important when it comes to asteroid mining is that you're then able to mine asteroids that are further away from Earth without having to worry about communicating with them frequently because 
as you probably already know, the further away an object, the more difficult it is to communicate with it because you can't, com you can't control it in real time. In fact, from Earth to Mars, it's a good few minutes between sending a message and receiving it and, well, if you've ever played computer games and you even lag for like a few milliseconds, it's unplayable. So imagine controlling a robot over that distance and the response time is, you know, minutes. And this is actually an area which NASA is working on and more specifically they're working on autonomous swarm spacecraft to mine the moon. And swarm basically means that there's going to be a lot of small spacecraft that all communicate with each other and work together to mine the moon. Okay, let's move on to launch vehicles and automation. So back in the day, you know, rocketry used to just be having a controlled explosion on one end and hoping that the rocket reaches its destination. But no, 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 not anymore. As you've seen with uh, SpaceX, they basically are able to now land rockets vertically. And I can tell you that this is no easy task. The amount of control systems and automation that has to go into creating the system is unreal. And as you can expect, there's a lot of tech behind the scenes as well as a lot of aerospace engineering to make this work. And this is a real key example that aerospace and tech are not two separate areas in industry. In fact, a lot of the time they coincide and align like this because the only way to build something like what SpaceX is building is by just combining the two things together. You can't have aerospace without the tech and you can't have the tech without the aerospace. You kind of need both to build insane rockets like the Falcon 9 and the soon to be launched Starship. But yeah, again, it's not all just to do with the landing. Even flying to the ISS on a Falcon 9 is all autonomous. So astronauts who board the Dragon capsule don't actually need to fly anything. There's no, there's no need for them to press any buttons unless if there is an emergency, but all they have to do is just relax, you know, chill, and enjoy the ride pretty much. Okay, let's move on to other types of things people flying, and I'm going to be talking about fighter jets, and more specifically, the actual helmets that the fighter pilots use. There is currently work being done to combine the world of aviation and fighter jets with the world of virtual reality and augmented reality, and both of those are going to be combined together in the actual pilot's helmet. So this insane piece of technology would allow the pilot to, in essence, see through the floor as they're flying so they can see their enemies wherever they are. And even if they're behind them, they'll have like a, a, a augmented reality mirror within their helmet so they can see behind them. So in essence, this will give the pilot more visibility from the cockpit itself because normally you can't see what's below you. You can't really easily see what's behind you. But with this cute, cool new technology using augmented reality, they can see both what's in front of them as well as what's just above them, behind them, around them and everywhere. And on top of this, there'll be no need for conventional instruments that you see a pilot seeing on their little dashboard, I guess you'd call it. Everything will be provided through their helmet and right in front of their eyes. And they'll only be able to see the select information that is necessary at that time. So there we have it. Space, aerospace, technology, all of that stuff can be smashed together to produce some of the most coolest solutions out there on the planet. And you may think that all of this is just science fiction, none of it happens yet, but you know what? Stuff like predicting prices of oil and gas using satellites and getting augmented reality headsets and fighter pilots and landing rockets vertically, all of this stuff is already happening. So, I mean, you could argue with me by saying, yeah, aerospace and tech, they're not the same thing, but you know what? There's a lot of overlap in certain areas. And you know what, if, if you don't know software engineering as an aerospace engineer, I definitely would say learn it because if you know hard tech and software, you would be one of the most insane engineers out there because you'd be able to create solutions that are pure software, you can create solutions that are pure hardware, and you can create solutions that combine the two. And that is where you can really do some groundbreaking stuff. And if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel, like the video, and comment down below what your favorite and most coolest piece of tech is that is related to the aerospace industry or any other industry as well. I'm just a fan of cool tech, to be honest. So yeah, drop a comment and I'll see you in another video. Goodbye.